Yeah. What's up there, everybody? I guess I'll just start this video. There's no point in trying to, uh, you know, waiting to think of uh, a good list of ideas to talk about or taking notes about what I'm going to say because uh, it's pointless. In a situation like, uh, I don't know, it's a mind fuck what's going on right now in the world. And uh, everybody's coping with it in their own way. And I'm not just talking about the virus or anything. It's a uh, the whole world is falling apart. And being a human right now in today's world, you know, I've I remember when I was younger and I thought and I started realizing all the shit that was going on and I thought, you know, may you live in interesting times is that old Chinese proverb, right? Well, that proverb, may you live in interesting times, was never meant to be some sort of a uh, good for you for living in interesting times or like you are gaining something from it, but rather it was a joke, a sarcastic remark that if the if times are interesting, if the world is interesting during the time when you live, likely there's a lot of turmoil and upheaval. And right now there's plenty of that, you know, it's almost depressing to even talk about because you can become a nihilist very quick if you start focusing on all the bullshit in the world. Now, I find myself in the middle more often than not, which means that I'm going to get shit from both sides. What I mean by that is I have a view, a, a somewhat nihilistic view of, well, humans, our population has multiplied by 10 in the last two centuries. Our consumption patterns have multiplied by over 10 in the last two centuries per person. And our basic understanding of our environment, of our communities, is so flawed that we are going to completely fall into oblivion in no time. You can't sustain a world of getting upwards of 10 billion people now on the type of lifestyles we live. And we know this. So we have this kind of cognitive dis dissonance. It's like this unwillingness to face our mortality. Not as individuals, that's a huge part of it, but as a species, we really think that we can keep on going. And uh, as I, the best way I heard it put was on his, this documentary. It was, um, I'm sure some of you have seen it, it's Planet of the Humans, which I hadn't seen, but um, I was well aware of these circumstances of, say, green energy, solar panels, uh, windmills, Whenever somebody talks about green energy, I say, well, do you realize what it costs to mine the rare earth elements to make these batteries? Or the cost of, or sorry, the windmills, or the cost of uh, the batteries and the damage that they make and the fossil fuels to transport things. And how we've caused ourselves this, we're stuck, you know. It, when people say fossil fuels have built our dependency... I mean, it's not just like, oh, well, we just need gas. It's, no, fossil fuels are everything. They're in packaging. It's the oil. It's the gas. It's everything that runs our infrastructure. And when that starts to fall apart, moving to green energy isn't that easy. In other words, let's say we ran out of gasoline tomorrow. We're not going to just, or sorry, out of oil, but uh, that would lead to gasoline, of course. Uh, it's not like we would be able to just switch to biofuels, right? I mean, anybody who thinks biofuels are an answer are is just completely uneducated on the subject. You could not grow enough fucking corn to power all the cars and ships and planes in this world. So, maybe it's a start, they would say. Well, no, it's really not. Biofuels are a horrible idea. Um, it might be great in certain localities, Let's say you live in Nebraska, and Nebraska is its own country, and you have tons of area to grow corn. Then go for it. Grow that corn and use it for fuel. But it requires fossil fuels to produce that, and to run the facilities, to run the trucks, the tankers, all these things. We are so disillusioned that we've created an illusion, if that makes sense, that we've really told ourselves that we can continue on business as usual. Now, the current virus, for example, I don't think that that's going to be the end of the world by any means. I do think that it is a, um, 
another nail in the coffin of humanity, if you will, in the sense that everything is so fragile, this tangled web that we've weaved of societal needs, uh, trade, business, a simple thing where one country can say, I'm going to decide that you can't do trade anymore. I mean, that's what the United States has done to Iran, for example. Now, I know a lot of people would say, well, fuck Iran, they're all, you know, Arabs, and we don't care about their problems, you know, screw them, they're all terrorists. If you really think that, if you really have that mentality, then you're part of the problem, beyond part of the problem. I mean, it's a garbage mindset that tells you that all Iranians are terrorists. It's like this thing I was reading the other day that said, the countries don't hate other countries for no reason. It's only when a country interferes with another country's business. So, the reason I bring this up is the U.S. put embargoes and they put, uh, you know, all these different, you know, regulations and laws and basically Iran can't do trade with anybody. However, we did the same thing to Venezuela and they are suffering too. So, the other day I read that five tankers with like a million and a half barrels of oil are now moving across the ocean from Iran to Venezuela. In other words, it's like the two outcasts of the school, right? The people who nobody talks to said, let's team up and let's do our own business. And then all of a sudden everybody pays attention and they start stepping in saying, oh, you can't do this. And, and I bring this up to say how absurd it is to think that the United States or any country should be able to say, no, this country cannot do business with this country because we don't think you should be able to. We're punishing you. We're spanking your little bottom because we don't like you. This is the world that we live in now where we have the power to do that under threat of military attack. It's absurd and it has to change. It really has to change quickly. I mean, I, I, I can't live through a, a lifetime of allowing my country to go out and invade other countries for the sake of what? What? That's the thing. What? Is it freeing the people or is it finding weapons of mass destruction? <laughs> you know, is it stopping terrorism? We never had a problem with terrorism before this, before we started invading and bombing other countries, right? And a lot of folks would say, oh, we had terrorism in this country. Well, it was all internal. All of it. Timothy McVeigh. The Weather Underground. Go back in time and look at all the terrorist groups within this country that have been completely internal. No country wants to fuck with other people until they feel like they're fucked with. And why am I bringing this up? It has nothing to do with war itself. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about people. And saying the same thing applies to individuals. If you treat other people like shit, you push them down, you don't allow them to do what they want to do, they're going to retaliate. <laughs> and that's uh, where we're at right now. People feel oppressed. They feel like they can't speak. I mean, there are so many things to talk about. It's almost like, to make a point, it would be, I'm somewhat nihilistic and somewhat progressive. I somewhat believe that everything has to fall apart in order for things to progress a little further and better in individual communities. And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. To kind of say, no, I don't. If the whole of society falls apart, it doesn't mean that we're all going to die. But the way we're living right now, you know, something has got to give. And when it does, hopefully your local community is able to handle it. Because if you can't depend on your community, what do you have to depend on? And let me give you, I live in the Pacific Northwest, where I, I love it here, because I have family here, because this is where I've always lived, but because I've traveled elsewhere and said, this is not a place I would want to be during a disaster. That includes the coast, that includes Florida, California, <clears throat> any place with desert or desertification, which can happen in a decade. And living here, I know I can grow food. I know we have at least a somewhat reasonable climate. If it rains all the time, that's much better than not having any rain at all. That's the way I see it. And with the changing world, I'm grateful to live here. But I think about people in Vegas, for example. You're living in Las Vegas, 
you know, a place that has none of its own water, basically. The, where all of the water is imported in a lot of places in Nevada, and these huge places that use up all this water and have sucked the Colorado River dry, and now they're moving on to trying to buy water from other towns up north who don't want to sell. There are going to be a lot of problems in our future, is my point. We are going to run into a lot of hardships as a society, but it's easy for us to point the finger at other nations and say, oh, well, that's their problem. But when it's our own nation, all of a sudden things change. You know, it's like uh, the so-called liberal states, by the way, the ones that actually pay more in federal taxes than they get back and actually carry the weight of these you know, supposedly Republican states, and I'm not saying that in a way to say that everyone in a state is Republican or Democrat. That's stupid. I hate it when they use those, you know, terms of this is a Republican or a Democrat state merely because 53% believe one thing or another. Uh, my point being that not Republican or Democrat, but rather poorer states are carried by the richer states because it's a form of socialism. It's what we consider American version of socialism helping other states that need it more. And it, in a way, for so long, we've helped each other in communities, we've helped each other as states, and now, out of the blue, we're more the, divided than we've ever been. And it's all through propaganda. And I just feel like people are being completely, you know, fooled by the media, by the president, by politicians in general, by the left, by the right, by the green energy movement, by the, you know, oil movement, by, you know, coal, by every group. Anybody who has fucking lobbying power is trying to fuck you over. It makes, it's very simple math, okay? And, um, it's unfortunate, you know, like I said about that Planet of the Humans documentary. Uh, they were pointing out how all of these green groups, who are supposedly there for environmentalist groups, let's say, uh, a huge majority of them are, are infiltrated by right-wing groups that are trying to get a, a foothold in this green movement. In other words, well, oil's fading, so let's get into burning trees. Let's get into cleaner energy, whatever we consider it. And like I said, making windmills is not going to solve any problems. We cannot windmill or solar panel our way out of this. We're fucked, people. But we as individuals aren't fucked. The human species is. Doesn't mean that we're not going to survive. Humans are very innovative. We can go underground. We can use the power we have, whether it be hydro, solar, or otherwise. We have the capacity now to survive for a long period of time in underground caverns if we have to. With uh, hydroponic you know, lighting and everything else. But is that life? Or is that just getting by and trying to live? I don't know. Um, it's kind of like when people talk about those who have built nuclear bunkers. And they say, well, I'm prepared for any nuclear fallout. I say, why? What do you want to survive for? Why would you want to have a bunker to survive specifically a nuclear holocaust? Do you want to come back out onto the earth and then live a few more years and then die from radiation poisoning or have your entire world gone? No, I mean, and in the past I thought I'm a survivor, but in a case like that I'd rather just go with the nuke. I'd rather stand right underneath it, you know? It's like, life is what it is. Nobody is eternal. We want to think that, you know, we can just live forever. But uh, the fact is, I understand the concept of, you know, just letting go when the shit gets really bad. And I'm using that as a metaphor for our whole species. It's not that we have to let go, but I feel like we have let go. We have just decided, let's party all night and keep drinking. And even if I wake up with a fucking hangover, at least I'm, I had fun the night before. The problem is that you don't remember the night before and you might die of alcohol poisoning. And we as a species are doing that right now in many ways. Maybe I sound like some hippie, hippie, liberal, whatever. I don't give a shit, you know? I really don't give a shit. I know who I am and how I feel. It's very difficult to explain these things, so when I come out without any notes whatsoever, without any idea what I want to talk about, turn on the camera and start talking, it's uh, 
sometimes uh, it's hard to really convey that message that I have in my heart. That my heart, my heart, my head. That uh, I've learned throughout my existence on this planet, like the rest of you have. It's complicated. Life is complicated, but it doesn't have to be. We pretend that we understand things that we can't even comprehend. You know, like God, right? I know what God is, you know, or I know how government should operate. I know the best way for everything, right? It's like the old Winston Churchill quote, uh, democracy is the worst form of government except all the others that have been tried. We as humans think we have things figured out. We see a person with a suit and a tie and think they must know what they mean. They must know what they're talking about. They don't. They just don't. None of us do. We're hairless apes doing the best we can. Be well.